Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. Guys, I'm sorry for the late start. This one's actually a legitimate reason, not something I'm making up to placate you. Uh, my guest tonight was supposed to be Ty Beard. He is at GaryCon, which is the Dungeons and Dragons convention. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's Ty. That's Ty. He's at GaryCon. It's embarrassing. You should make fun of him for it. He's there. And when Ty, when Ty is at a convention, he joins the show. That's a tradition that we have. And right at 10 o'clock, he says, hey, man, would it be a huge inconvenience for you if I canceled? And I was like, no, it'll be fine. Didn't do like a ton of show prep because... I was going to talk to you about stuff and we can just talk and have a good show. So then I'm like, you know, I don't want to make him feel bad. That motherfucker, that bastard, that dirty, rotten piece of garbage. I'll promise you to be on your show. I'd love to be on your show. All right, Nick, uh, is it an inconvenience? Uh, I have to uh, not do anything. So he's not, he's not coming on the show. So then I'm like, holy shit, I got to scramble and try and figure out what I'm going to do. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to do a show. Of course, absolutely. The show might not be as long as normal because I was supposed to talk to Ty, that motherfucker, and some of the topics I was going to talk about, I've been talking about. I was just going to get his perspective. So that's kind of killed some of the prep I've done, which was not prep because I didn't need to. I just was going to talk to Ty about stuff I already know about. But I do have some stories to talk about. We'll get to it. It'll be fun. But the show's probably going to end somewhere around midnight central. So sorry. Um, and sorry for starting late, but I had to get some stuff together to actually talk about with you guys. Um, we do have that. We have that brief. That It's a Haynes brief. Not really. It's, I have that brief about the, uh, the amicus brief from the Trump immunity, right? The Trump immunity case before the Supreme Court. We read Matt Wilson's brief. Uh, Matt Wilson? Wilson? Is it Wilson? My, I don't know my own friend's name. Matt Wilson. I do know his name. Oh, thank God. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. No, I do. Uh, so uh, we read Matt Wilson's brief. We've got this other brief. We started reading it. It's pretty funny. It's so shit. Like, it's so bad. So we might uh, read that a little. We'll probably finish that. It's a couple pages. And then we've got, um, I've got a couple other stories. Valhalla wants an invite. Valhalla wants an invite. Oh. Guys, have you smelled Valhalla? He's, um, like, that's not actually, like, that's not a Nordic joke. I mean, the Nords are terrible people. I was just talking today. Because I, so my kids, my kids had a, a presentation celebration today. It was really nice. They got to do like a play and sing. All the stuff that kids do. Like it's, uh, we don't send them to regular school, but we, we have like some activities that are as big, you know, groups. And then they had an end of the year presentation, even though the end of the year is still several weeks away. Um, and they still have the thing going. They do the presentation here for scheduling issues. This is too much information. You guys don't need this. You don't care about kids scheduling unless you're Joe Biden. Anyway, anyway, so they had this thing. They've been working on it for a while. It's great. We're sitting there. And then they do a, like a picture slideshow review of the year, right? And I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, because I only know my class. I don't go around anywhere else. That's creepy. I'm not a child. I'm not learning from these people. I know everything they're teaching. And so they have this picture slideshow. And one of the things they did was they went to a curling. Uh, is it a rink? A stadium? An arena? A curling rink, I think. It's a shuffleboard. It's a frozen shuffleboard. It's a shuffleboard on ice. It's a Ouija board that you put a cold bitch into. It's just, it's just shuffleboard for fucking Nordic people. And it's, it's dumb. It's the worst sport. People are like, curling got popular. I'm like, why would this be popular ever? A shuffleboard, which is only enjoyed by 89 year olds on cruises that they're about to get mugged on. 
and then they put it on ice. Because everybody likes to be cold, inconveniently cold. And then they like do this weird lungy thing because the Swedes contributed. I don't know why curling developed the way it did. And they throw this big fucking rock. And then a couple of people go and use brooms to like clean the ice. I know what they're doing. They're, they're roughing up the ice to generate friction d- directly. I know what curling is, but what curling looks like is better than what it is. What curling is is even dumber. And so they're, they're sitting there like, oh, I got a broom to curve the ice. Like, what are you doing? Like, don't curve a rock on ice with a broom. Do something but more interesting. I don't know. Put rockets on it or something. Make it cool. Shoot a rock into a different country. Shuffleboard on ice is dumb. It's like a Disney production. I hate it. I hate curling. But they had pictures of curling. I think that's the whole point of the subject. I, I hate curling. Oh, and I hate the Nordic people. Intensely. For inventing curling and nothing else. Like, oh, we invented Vikings. No, you didn't. Africa invented Vikings. I learned that. I learned that Africa invented uh, Vikings from a deep study, a meta study on the uh, African diaspora and, uh, and a collection of contemporary writings about the pre-times. And you know they invented Vikings because what did they do? They took things like villages and women. So we know that the Af- I'm going to stop this. The Nordic people are bad, but also good because they're happy in their socialism. Anyway, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter at all. I'm going to read that brief. I don't even know how I got on this rant. Oh, Valhalla waits. Valhalla. That's why he wants to come on the show. He says he's Germanic. I'm sorry. Oh, you're, you're a, what? You're a filthy gall. That's cool. It's great. Fantastic. How is it losing to the Romans? How was it when Julius Caesar took your lands and your property and your women and your children sold them to other Romans? How is that? Maybe I'll bring Valhalla on, but still, he doesn't get to talk that much. He just has to sit there and look at me. That's what I should do. I should bring Valhalla on the show, but mute him. So all he can do is just watch me talk. That'd be mean. Just kidding. We won't do that. I might bring him on for a little bit. I we'll see how it goes. I said, I'm so, anyway. Um, we have, uh, I think I have some other stories too. Oh yeah. What we, oh, we got to talk about Don Lemon. That's funny. Cause he's an idiot. Um, I'm not sure what else has even happened today. I wasn't planning on talking about any of this stuff. We were going to talk about, uh, Ty and I were going to talk about the death of Kotaku. Cause that's great. Uh, we were going to talk about the death of Deadspin, which is also great. And uh, uh, Outpost Nerd says, didn't Poland bitch out of every war? No. Outpost Nerd. Poland does not do that. The Polish people are very brave. Polish people are, are dumb. There's a big difference between being dumb and being a coward. They didn't bitch out of the war. They went the wrong way. They try, they're like, well, we can't read a map. That's not their fault. Anna G says, maybe you should just do a bunch of random topic rants. Well, they kind of like, they spring up organically. I'm not going to say the joke that's in my head. I'm not going to do that. I should, but I won't. Like children at a Biden farm. Anyway, uh, we're going we're gonna to go through this brief. It's not super long. We've got, um, that's what she said. We've got a couple things that we can talk about as well. If you guys have any topics that you would like me to blindly address, that'd be great. Uh, because again, uh, a an old man business lawyer down in Texas was like, Nick, we have to do the show. It's, uh, it's tradition. It's tradition. I'm like, okay, I like, would, did Friday work? Yeah, oh yeah. Right. I'm like, well, I have the normal time, but I can also go like a little bit earlier and that might be more convenient for me, maybe more convenient for you. It's like, oh yeah, I got something in the morning. Uh, what time? I'm like 10 o'clock. He's like, oh, I'm perfect. Perfect. Perfection. This man said it was perfection. And he's like, Nick, I, I gotta go. Uh, he said, Nick, I gotta go. Not, not what you think I said. Well, let me see. I don't think he's even waiting. He's not even here. Here's what he sends me. Would it be a disaster if I couldn't come on tonight? I'm having a problem extract myself. Oh, Ty was having a problem pulling out. 
Oh my God, he's a Gary Con, so you know he's pulling out of a fat guy. No wonder he's got a problem. He's got a problem extracting himself. Ty, what's wrong with you? And then he says, I'm really sorry, but I've got to bail. Okay. And I said, okay, no problem, because I'm a polite motherfucker. And he says, thanks, man. He doesn't know what's coming. He doesn't know what I'm going to do to him later, because I won't extract myself. That was the wrong joke. But it was a good joke. No, it wasn't a good joke. <laughs> oh, finally, Evil Fandango, what a nice guy. He says, uh, Nick looks healthy. Thank you. Um, no, I, I was sick, and then it's this lingering fucking sickness that just doesn't go away. Like even Lady Rags was looking at me the other day. She's like, your color is like, you're more pale than me. And I'm like, that's not fair. You're a snowman. And she's like, no, you look really pale. I'm like, what do you want to do? Should I tell my skin to get less pale? It's like you need some sun. I'm like, Babe, we live in Minnesota and it's still March. The sun doesn't exist. It's stuck in Australia. It doesn't care. So and she's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Like, well, I guess I could have worn blackface. Like, I could have done that. Give me a charcoal mask. Give me a charcoal mask and I'll do it. There we go. That's what I need. Get rid of this skin condition where I am too light because there's no sun in this fucking cursed tundra of liberalism and high taxes. Anyway, address the Fanny Judge certifying for appeal. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, Tanji, for being a constructive member of the audience. I love you. You get a gold star. We'll talk about that in just a second, actually. I just, uh, we've got a couple uh, people joining at Paralegal Status, just Joy and Rosemarie J. Thank you for doing that. Welcome. I need to get my, I have the, I'm all out of sorts. I'm all out of shorts and all out of sorts. I'm not all out of shorts. They're just short. Why do people want long, never mind. I'm not going to do this topic. I'm not going to do it. No one understands. No one understands. You're like, why would you want long shorts? They're called shorts, and you want them to go past your knees like some sort of heathen. And they're like, no, that's that's cool. Short shorts are gay. I'm like, who told you that? My best friend, Eric. Oh God, he's checking out your shorts. He's like, you should wear longer shorts. Said, oh, less gay. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that. Not of shorts. Let's do this. Let's do this. Jessica Reloaded says, I'm sorry, Nick wants his shorts so short that his balls hang out of them. On each side, like on each leg. I want the bifurcation to sit on the seam and I want them to droop down around the edges. That's when you're peak masculinity and also old. So, uh, yes, that's true, Jessica. Thank you. I agree. Um, all right. Let's talk about the judge certifying an appeal for Fannie Willis. The Fannie Willis decision. Okay. Who was I talking to about this? I think it was Matt. Was it Matt? I think it was Matt Wilson. We were talking about the Fannie Willis decision because I was pissed that the judge basically split the baby harder than Planned Parenthood, right? And we're sitting there and it's like, you can't say both of these people probably lied to the court and that there's still an odor of lying about their relationship under oath, they also have an ethical duty of candor. So that's beyond the perjury is a violation of their ethical duties, right? Both of them engaged in this. And it was shown that, man, it's really likely that both of them lied. He said uh, Fannie Willis's testimony was unprofessional, which is not a great word to hear as, a, as an attorney because it's a professional responsibility board or it's a lawyer's professional code of conduct. It's the ethics Conduct is professionalism for lawyers. So saying something's unprofessional, he's bordering on saying it's unethical. I think it was Matt who posited that maybe what he didn't want to do was go full in on Fannie Willis because no one does except Nathan Wade bit the bullet on that. No one wants to go full in on Fannie Willis, including this judge. However, he goes, maybe he wants to make a ruling, give something, acknowledge whatever, write the nasty stuff in his opinion, and then kick that upstairs to the appeals court. Let them make the tough decision because he's elected. He's an elected Democrat judge 
who once worked for Fannie Willis, donated to her campaign. Like he aligns with her. He's very, he should not be the judge of this case. Like that should have been a recusal. But anyway, so he's like simpatico with her. His supporters are her supporters. Anyway, sorry. Jokes come to my head that would be funny if Fannie Willis wasn't hideous. And so then I have to think through them. Say, do I want to say this about like a loaf of pumpernickel? No, I don't. I don't want to talk about a pumpernickel needing support. I just want to move on. The chat doesn't want to hear this either. The judge is like, I don't want to punish Fannie Willis because I need to be reelected. So I'll kick it upstairs to people who are not elected. I think the appeals court in Georgia is a point away. Oh, you know what? Let's check it out. Appellate judge. Judge Georgia. Let's see if they're. Oh, they're elected. Sort of. I don't know if you guys know how judges get elected typically. So we always talk about elected judges and judges are functionally elected, but practically they're not. And here's why. Here's why. Judges retire prior to the election. So what happens is the judge will retire usually like maybe like a year before their term expires, six months, whatever. They're, when their party is in power, right? So uh, this, is a, this is a Democrat judge. So he would retire prior to when a Democrat's in office. And then the Democrat would fill his judges, but he'd appoint a judge before the election uh, who aligns with the same values, right? And then that guy would run again as an incumbent because here's what happens in America. When there's an incumbent in a judgeship, people don't hear about judges. Judges don't really get to campaign. There's rules about it. They can't talk about issues that they may rule on. It's a whole bunch of ethical re reasons, blah, 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 blah. So you don't really get like a nice judge campaign where you're like, oh, is he going to smash uh, child abusers with a sledgehammer? Because if not, I don't want him as a judge. They don't get to campaign on anything. They just get to put out some basic information, maybe list of their decisions or whatever. And that's what you have to vote on. No one reads that shit. Except for the, uh, what is that, conservative, the, not, not Federalist, if maybe it's Federalist Society. Yeah, Federalist Society. They read all that shit. No one else does. Real people don't. People go and they go, okay, so-and-so judge. And they read incumbent and they're like, come sounds cool. So I'm going to vote on that guy because that's probably the better person. And then they pick him based on the incumbency. And incumbent judges win almost all the time unless they have a very controversial case that is public that can then be used against them as like, uh, you know, the, the general public goes, wait, oh, no, no, this is the guy that did this. I don't want that guy back. That's terrible. Most of the time, they don't run into that. They, they get appointed, end up on the ballot as incumbency, which gives you a huge advantage. So they're elected, but not really. So the appellate judges in Georgia, let's see. Let me see how many of them are actually elected versus appointed. God damn it. So we've got uh, an appointment. One, two, three. Fucking pop-ups. One, two, three. Four. Okay, so there are four elected judges in Georgia. All right? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven appointed judges. All right, so just to give you an idea of how this works out, elected judges are re-elected after being appointed. There you go. That's that. So, <laughs> Alexander Tan, you look gaunt slash sick, comma, after overdose. What's it? My friend, do you English? Because a comma after sick makes after overdose not make sense. Let me correct you. You would say you look gaunt slash sick after overdose. There wouldn't be a comma, period. Nice sentence. Your sentence is broken. And then you have, oh, comma, are you a clone? Uh, yes, I am a clone. But uh, no, I've, I don't think I've ever overdosed on anything. Hold on. It's really important. I've come clean with this. I live in Minnesota. I've overdosed on taxes every year of my life. Even when I didn't pay them, I still overdosed on them. Fuck taxes, fucks Minnesota. Oh my God, I hate this state. 
I look gaunt because I, I told you guys, I spent two years losing 40 pounds. Depending on how often you watch the show, I will look significantly skinnier than I did in 2022 because 40 pounds. And then I lost another 10 pounds when I did get sick a couple weeks ago. I'm slowly gaining it back, but it takes a while to gain back weight because I don't, I can't go out and like eat 9,000 calories. I'm, I'm busy and that takes a lot of time and effort and I don't put in effort into anything. Um, we've got, uh, oh, <laughs> from locals, screen name is Negro Baguette, but not that. It says, Nick, lawyer said the court granted record expungement today. First time since I was 18. I am not a convicted felon. Dude, that is awesome. That is awesome. But with a screen name like that, I have faith in you to return very quickly to felony status. And I wish you good luck. And I hope it's the most fun crime you can come up with. Oh my God. No, seriously. Expungement is awesome. It's, it's really tough to get. A lot of states have really strict expungement rules, very specific crimes that can be expunged and uh, specific circumstances. So that's awesome, dude. Um, having a felony record is really fucking tough. And that's why when you work in law a little bit, you start to meet people who have felony records and you realize like a lot of them aren't that bad. You made a mistake at some point years ago. Like, Oh, you, it's like hard to get an apartment. Isn't it? Like it's hard to get anything because of this stupid felony. And so you're like, well, I made a mistake a while back and I would like to like move on with my, my life. I, I'm like, I'm productive now. I, I kill two people at once now or whatever. And, uh, Oh, speaking of that, there's that mass uh, shooting in Moscow. ISIS is claiming. Was that you? Now that your felony is gone, you just decide to go to Moscow and blow up a theater or whatever. That's, that's not what I would do. Anyway, uh, expungements are really great for people who had a mistake in their past. It's been a long time. They, they served their time. They paid their debt or duty. And now they're just like, I just want to live. So congrats, man. He says, I'm going to eat my parents next. The noblest of causes. It's the circle of life, like Lion King, right? Like, they eat food, they copulate and conceive you, and they spit you out into the world. It only makes sense that when they die, either prematurely or like when they are supposed to, that you consume them because you don't have time to have them become grass and have an elk eat the grass and then eat the elk. That, you don't have time for that shit. You need to eat them now. Listen to Chandler Halderson. He is the guy. He knows. Uh, so good job with that. Um, all right. <clears throat> Adam JC444 says, did that really happen in Moscow? I, I mean, it, the news could lie about it, but that's that's like a big one. That's like an that's like what they got Alex Jones for. It's like, I didn't even lie. Uh, okay, here we go. Where is what's I gonna do? Oh, yeah, the fucking uh document where did it go where did it go i still have it pulled up i think giggity uh oh shit we're gonna talk about this guy too in a little bit not now not now where is this isn't it this is the wrong window do i ha i might have put that window away there it is okay sorry about that uh david boyle We started this yesterday. Started this yesterday. Um, this is David Boyle. He's the counsel of record. And uh, we read through a little bit of this. But I, I think, I'm, should I just start it over? We can do the whole thing. It's only a couple pages. It's a couple pages of raw comedy. Breck says, U.S. warned Moscow of the event. Moscow let it happen and 40 are dead. Look, the U.S. warned the U.S. about 9-11. They let that happen, too. I, I don't know. Moscow is a bad one. And Hurricane Katrina, because I learned from the prophet, yay, that George Bush doesn't like black people. Did you guys see that? Hurricane Katrina fundraiser, where it's Mike Myers and Kanye West doing Ebony and Ivory live to try and raise, like they weren't singing it. They were being it. And they're trying to raise money for uh, New Orleans or whatever after Hurricane Katrina. And 
Mike Myers like, here, you can direct your funds to this thing brought by uh, FEMA, the new department created by the government just before Hurricane Katrina hit. And they have camps and trailers already ready for hurricane preparedness. You can donate money to it right now. I'm going to go to my friend Kanye West before he stopped liking Jews. He can talk to you and goes to Kanye and he's like, George Bush doesn't like black people. And he goes back to Mike Myers and goes, It was so good. It was so, it was perfection. It's like, this is TV. This is television. That's the one thing you don't get from on demand television anymore. There's no live telethons happening on Netflix. Well, there probably are, but not, I don't know, not all. You don't get Kanye West and Mike Myers in the same place. George Bush should have hired Michael Myers if he wanted to take care of Louisiana. I hear that guy's based. Oh my gosh. So we're going to start this, uh, this document here. We'll just start at the beginning again because I only read a little bit last night and it's not that long of a read. So we'll hit it and then we'll keep going. But seriously, if you guys want to, uh, if you have any topics you want me to hit specifically, um, just go ahead and drop them in chat and I'll try to see them. Uh, obviously, you can super chat them. It doesn't matter. Like you don't have to. I don't care. Uh, I'll try to see them in chat regularly. I'm not trying to require people to pay money to drop in a, a story. What I see is what I see. We'll go with that. Um, Neurodivergent says, hey, Nick, don't forget to shout out the Gibson Go for Julian Delfiki. We are going to do that in just a minute, actually, right after this topic. Oh, Candace Owens. Guys, Candace Owens leaves the blaze. Or she got fired? Wait, no, it, was, it wasn't blaze. Daily Wire, right? Daily Wire. <gasps> hey. Uh, Daily Wire. Candace Owens. You see, I, it's almost like there's a lawyer on the internet after Steven Crowder dropped his little uh, spiel, right? And Candace Owens fired back at him. And I was watching it and I looked at it and I was like, oh God. Do you know what happened? This is funny to me. Candace Owens was mad at Crowder because she saw the deal that they offered him. And she realized she didn't negotiate for a better deal than their first offer to her. She took it. And you can watch her in real time realize that she could have done that and didn't. And it was a matter of time from that moment, from Steven Crowder Candace Owens was going to leave Daily Wire because her contract wasn't good. And she looked and she's like, 100 million? I'm only getting three-fifths that. And she was like, I could have negotiated for more. But she didn't. And she's sitting there talking about how she, Crowder was unprofessional, like didn't know what he was doing. I was like, oh, Candace, you're the dumbest person in the room. That's not good. It's not good. I saw her uh, tweet today, I think it was. And it was like, Freedom. Or whatever. I was like, she's free. She's going to be talking more about it. I was like, okay. That's funny. That's funny. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Okay. All right. Let's read this. Amex. Stop distracting me. Uh, Tech Crisis says, sorry, man, broke, but you should get the AK guy back. Yes, Brandon Herrera. Uh, we're going to do... I He was in chat the other day. I said I'm going to reach out to him. That's true. Uh, we're going to do that very soon, hopefully. And we'll get that. Um, all right. This is the amicus, amicus curie statement of interest. You have to write this interest statement as to why you are speaking into a case before a court when you're not a party. So you have to just say why, like what your interest is. Your interest cannot be one of the party's interests. Your interest can be aligned with the party interests, but you have to be individually interested in the issue. That's the, that's the kind of way this works. Uh, Grifty says, F the haters. Heroin chic looks so great on you. Oh, thank you, Grifty. Well, I'll give you my phone number. Uh, hashtag make skinny great again. Yes. And then he says, just kidding. Wait. He says, you're the effing goat of late night. But if you switch to daytime streams, how about you set a brother up with your time slot? Like, how do I set you up? Like, you just stream in the... It's not my time slot. It's just a time that I stream. This is a weird thing that... Uh, 
that uh, Joe would talk about. My my good friend Joe. He's like, Nick, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to infringe on your time. I'm like Joe, infringe on my time. I don't. It's not mine. It's just I start my show at eleven because that's when I start it. Like if you start at nine, you're gonna go longer than two hours. Just go. I don't, if you're gonna go longer than two hours, they might like it. Just keep going. Just try that out. Anyway, uh, I mean, I could maybe direct people to your show. I don't know. I don't know what 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 the future holds. I don't know what today holds. Still, this day isn't over. We have one hour left. Um, the present Amicus Curie, David Boyle, here and after Amicus, wants the immunity case of Petitioner Donald J. Trump to be treated fairly. Since Trump may have as many rights as, if no more than, any other American. This reminds me. There is a Trump story, two Trump stories to talk about. I'm not going to pull up the cases because they're, they don't need, or the articles, because you don't need the articles for them. One is Trump is attempting to get a bond, his appeal bond in the New York case. And uh, the other is about, um, hold on, I'm thinking about how to, let's play it up with this. What was the other? There's the appeal. Oh, the sale of truth, truth socials merging with a company going public. Trump's about to get like $3 billion. So fucking funny. Like, ah, we're going to get this big judgment on him, which he may appeal because I don't know if you guys know this, but the eighth fucking amendment exists. Does anybody know what the eighth amendment is? No cruel and unusual punishment. Everybody knows that. What is the other part of the eighth amendment? Nor excessive fines or bails. There's a great Eighth Amendment argument for Trump in the Supreme Court about this issue specifically. Because, sure, he has a bunch of, like, dismissal, like, I'm, Im I'm immune to it. I was immune to everything. I should be immune to this. I'm immune to COVID just by my natural blood. So he should have that uh, argument going. But he also has an Eighth Amendment claim here because I'm not sure if you guys know this, but $460 million or whatever is pretty excessive. Fines and bails are not supposed to be um, based on your ability to pay in the United States. They're supposed to be based on the amount of damage that you've done. But Trump can very easily argue that even if, sorry, I had shit in my pockets that I don't want, that even if he was somehow responsible for some damage that no one complained about, $400 million dollars $450 million in a civil case that goes to the state and is prosecuted by the state as if it was criminal and is based on criminal concepts, but with a lower standard of guilt than a criminal case would have. And also the findings in that case will be used in the criminal case in a very nefarious way to help bolster the evidence against him and, and find that he was definitely guilty because another, uh, another court found by a preponderance of the evidence that Trump committed fraud. So now they're going to let in that Trump commit fraud. So, um, he now is, get, she should be going to the Supreme Court saying the Eighth Amendment says no excessive fines or bails. None of his victims complained about this. It was entirely the state of New York running effectively a criminal prosecution with a lower bar uh, or lower standard of proof in front of a bench trial that you don't have a right to a jury for, which is also should be a, uh, a Sixth Amendment claim. Um, he has a lot of opportunity to appeal this, but even so, he's about to get $3 billion in cash if this company goes public and it was just approved. The merger was approved. The public, the, the public offerings approved motherfuckers about laughing in dollars. What'd you guys do with $3 billion? My initial plan was really important, like really good. I had a plan to be, um, as a billionaire, I had a plan to uh, start a shoe line have it become very successful and worth a ton of money and then insult the Jews and have it taken away. But someone did that first. And you never want to come second as a billionaire. You don't have time for that shit. So that plan's gone. I don't know. What do you, what do you even do? Like, it's, it's maniacal money. It's funny. It's great. I don't know what $3 billion is even like. It's like a bowl of Apple Jacks. It's the size of the Grand Canyon. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. So I keep getting distracted because uh, my brain is distractible tonight, which is good. All right. Speaking of shoes, Trump is a criminally indicted shoe salesman, according to the brief. See example given Trump hawks 399 branded shoes at SneakerCon a day after a 355 million ruling against him. From CBS News, 
He hawks them. Uh, <laughs> wait. It says, all links here in last check, March 18th, 2024. Not president legally speaking. Oh, the, the disconnect in the sentence was weird. He's a criminally indicted shoe salesman, not president legally speaking, which is in quotes. I don't know why legally speaking is in quotes here. We'll have to ask David Boyle what um, – ironic use of legally speaking he has when he's literally speaking legally that he's not the president of the United States. I guess his legal claim is he's not the president. He's a shoe salesman. That might be the joke. Like the shoe salesman should be in quotes. Cause that's funny. He's not a sh like, he has a shoe line. That's hilarious, but I don't think he's out there like uh, Al Bundy trying to put fat women in these things, but he is not president legally speaking. He's a former president. He's a candidate for office, but he's not president legally. These quotes bother me. Why are they there? Trump, Trump, Trump talking to uh, Compton saying black power here with the fist. Black power. I love the dark people. I've seen some that are darker than others. Ugandans, maybe. Uh, he says, <laughs> he's got a parenthetical here. Some may wonder if an air treason or air self-pardon shoe is upcoming. Look. There's good lawyers and there's good comedians. Those are mutually exclusive. Okay. If you're a good lawyer, don't be a comedian. If you're a good comedian, don't be a lawyer. If you're a lawyer and a comedian, you're bad at both. Trust me. I know. Boyle here is like, I'll write this witty line. I'll name his shoes air treasons or air self pardons. They're not Nikes, homie. It's not, they'd be air barons. That'd be the, like, if he was going to go with Nike, be air barons, they'd be like these big ass shoes. They'd be really young looking and have stupid colors on them, like some Zoomer would wear. And they'd have like the poofy mushroom haircut or whatever. That'd be the air barons. That's, that's a better, air treason isn't good. Air treason sounds like a Steven Seagal movie in 2009. Don't, don't do that. Air self-pardon. That's not... Self-pardon is a contentious legal issue that's unresolved before the Supreme Court. Why would air self-pardon be a thing? We don't know if Trump can pardon himself. He probably can. Who's, who's going to stop him, right? Amicus wants all Americans to be treated justly. Okay. Uh, accounting for his interest in the case, this isn't to call Trump a good person. Well, no. No, wait, this isn't to call Trump a good person? Uh, indeed, that son of man has been compared to Charles Manson. Mugshots. Son of man. Is that an insult? I think it is. Like, I think I, it, I think that's a deep cut. Son of man. Is that, that's biblical? Phrases used in the Hebrew Bible. Various apocalyptic works of the intertestamental period. And the Greek New Testament. What is the meaning of son of man? Uh, human being. God's Messiah destined to preside over the final judgment of humankind. Wait, 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 wait. He called him the son of man. I, I, that seems like a compliment if it's God's Messiah. But I think he means human being, maybe. I don't know. This is weird. That's a weird one. David, you're weird. You're off track. You're losing focus. I wouldn't hire you. I don't think if I did, I'd probably be put you with Michael Cohen using AI to write briefs. Maybe. Not good. Not not a not a great look for it. I, I don't get this guy. I don't know why he called him son of man. Has been compared to Charles Manson, and he has the mugshot of uh, Trump here, looking literally. Trump looks like a fat version of my grandmother. She's deceased, but when she was alive, though, like, like when she woke up in the morning and she hadn't had coffee, if she dyed her hair, uh, like peach. Or, I don't what. It's not platinum. If she dyed her hair Trump and she brushed it forward and was like angry in the morning over no coffee. It's like her, but uh, at like 1.75 width. I don't know why Trump looks like a, like a lovely Catholic woman who I miss very dearly, but fatter. But he does. I don't know. He just does. And then there's Charles Manson. That looks like Andy Worski. But with better hair. Look at the, that's amazing. Oh my God. I, am I crazy? 
Worski just got 10 times funnier to me if he looks like Charles Manson. Am, am I insane? I, I know he's shorter, but like, am I insane? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm weird there. Maybe it looks like someone else. I'm not sure. Okay. So here we go. Um, yeah, the Stephen Colbert likens defending Trump over Capitol riot to excusing Charles Manson for mass murder, which is pretty funny because like Trump didn't uh, kill anybody. I mean, Charles Manson didn't, I don't think he personally did, but like there are more bodies to Charles Manson. Now, if you compared the Capitol Police to Charles Manson, for example, like then you're getting close to the body counts. Uh, there's only one. No, no, no. Yeah, there were several from the Capitol. Anyway, we're going. We're going through this. If Trump is proud of his mugshot and even sells clothing bearing it, why not show his fellow arrestee slash woman abuser slash violent fomenter's mugshot here too? Sauce for the goose. Wait. He's talking about Charles Manson? Like, because they both got arrested. I guess it's okay to show like Charles Manson's mugshot alongside Trump's. That's weird. What is he? Sauce for the goose. There's inside jokes I didn't even know were inside. They must be small. The squid. The squid says, it's amazing. You're both late to being early and early to being late at the same time. I didn't think it was possible. Look, I'm an innovator. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm an innovator. I have the capacity and ability to blow your mind with a stream, but I won't use it most of the time. But when I do, it will defy all laws and all known rationality. How is he? Is he so late to being early? How is he so early to being late? My God, man, it's beautiful. Uh, summary of the argument. So this is what he's going to tell us about. Law is all about this. It's persuasive writing 101 in English. Like in, in your high school English class or junior high or whatever, you learn persuasive writing, right? Informative speeches uh, or informative writing goes like this. You have an introduction, a body, usually three paragraph body in high school. That's what you get. Because uh, the three paragraph, but well, you no, know, you used to get a three paragraph body back in the eighties and nineties. But once the twenty, uh, the two thousands and twenty tens came, those kids started getting fatter. You got four or five bodies. Like the cheerleaders even have five body, uh, five paragraph bodies now. But um, like the one that tore my shoulder, you bitch. Uh, anyway, you have this basic format: intro, body, conclusion. But in legal writing, it's slightly different. Uh, it's it's Iraq. Is what it's called. Not like Iraq, like uh, George Bush or whatever. It's I-R-A-C. It's intro, rule, application or argument, and then conclusion. So you write your introduction. You have the rule that you're talking about. You apply or argue the facts of the case applied to the rule that you're talking about. And then the conclusion. But it's the same basic thing. In the intro, you tell them what you're going to tell them. And then in the R and A, usually in the A section, you tell them what you told them you were going to tell them. And then in conclusion, you're like, by the way, I just told you what I told you I was going to tell you and then told you. So you, you tell them over and over. And that's, that's a basic thing. So you have your summary argument and then you have your argument. Here's what I'm about to argue. And then you go argue it. So summary of argument, presidential official acts immunity should be reasonably limited. Why? We don't know. And not immunize election fraud and violence. Citation, please. I can't wait for his actual argument which I know I'm delaying it. I'm edging his actual argument, but this is really interesting. And, and I'm going to give you an actual reason why it's interesting to me. I don't care if you find, I do care. I'm a gentle lover. I do care if you find it interesting or not, but here's why I find it interesting. When you get to the uh, pardon power, right? This is wild. They're like, how how broad should we make the pardon power of the president? And they're like, broader, broader, baby. Make it broad. And so they're like, well, we don't want him to pardon for impeachment. And they also said, and we don't want him to pardon for treason because treason's bad, right? And then they went, actually, though, just impeachment. And they allowed the president to pardon anyone, presumably including himself, his close family, his advisors for treason. 
that's how crazy this shit is. Join me, if you will, on a thought journey. A gray-haired man who hates black people has been in office since 1906. Uh, Named Joe Biden. He remembers when Hillary Clinton was born. He remembers when she entered menopause. And he remembers when she dies in the future. Um, Joe, Joe Biden enters office. Now let's hypothetically say that a bunch of people work together to get Joe Biden into office through various acts of fraud. literally, Or, or through literally conferring with foreign powers and enemies in the nation to maybe like hack a machine and, and like make it look like he didn't do it, but, but some evil dictator or something like Putin or something did, right? Let's hypothetically say that that could happen. We know it can't secure his election in history, but if it did, and if the plot were uncovered, Joe Biden would have the power to pardon people who fraudulently got him into office as an enemy of the state. That's how powerful the pardon power is as president. And you couldn't prosecute him for it. If you tried to prosecute them, he'd pardon them. The solution, of course, would be impeachment or 25th Amendment removal. Either way, there are solutions for it, but it's not through the criminal courts. Because if you try and you're like, well, that's treason. That's obviously treason. He'd go, no. Trump could have issued a blanket pardon for everyone involved in January 6th at any level. He could have done that. He did not do that. Some people are very, very critical of him for not doing that. They're angry with him. But he didn't. They say he abandoned them, etc. There's some validity. But he could do that. Even if they were actually guilty of insurrection, he could pardon them. He could pardon everybody. Because that's how broad the pardon power is. So when you go to this and you say, well, Presidential immunity should not immunize election fraud violence. And the, the crazy thing is, the reason I know about this is simple. I don't remember which number it is. But in the Federalist Papers, specifically, this is addressed. How broad is the pardon power of the president? It only says in matters of impeachment. Does it include treason? And I think it's one Hamilton wrote. Maybe Who knows? I think it's what Hamilton wrote. And he said, yeah, it, it includes treason. We thought about not including treason. But you know what? It's the president. If you could just accuse him and his people of treason, like you can derail a presidency. So he does get the pardon power. Impeach him. Just fucking impeach him. Simple. Simple. All right. Since Trump may pardon himself if reelected, the court's upcoming opinion and Trump's trial shouldn't be unduly delayed. This is a, this is a legal conclusion that is not foregone, but it, it seems like it might work when it gets before the Supreme Court, but it hasn't been there yet. Giving Trump excessive immunity or slow walking the opinion slash trial may associate the court with chaos and evil. The court doesn't care if they're associated with chaos and evil. That's the whole point of the Supreme Court is not to care where you're associated. You're appointed for life to be immune from association guilt. Now they're not because they're stupid, smart old people, but they're supposed to be. I mean, from that association guilt, you're supposed to make decisions that are hard. Their only concern is, is this constitutional? Unless it's an original jurisdiction case, in which case they decide the case. But is this constitutional or not? Is this permissible or should it be restricted? That's it. Associating with chaos and evil? Yeah. Because the court delivered the Dred Scott opinion. I don't... I, and uh, Korematsu, they're like, yeah, internment camp the Japanese. We got them all in one place in case we need a microwave. Uh, and a current blockbuster film is resonant here. This is a dumb line. Again, don't try to be witty. This is writing advice, not for lawyers, but for everybody. If you're writing, don't try to be witty. Be witty. Don't try. There is no try, only do, right? That's what Yoda said about kids. He's like, never mind. Don't try to be witty, just be witty. If you're trying to be witty, you fail immediately, every time, like all my jokes. Um, here we go. The mild one says, last night, we're, we were one AR-15 short of history repeating itself. As Black Lives Matter rioters were chasing Kyle Rittenhouse at the University of Michigan, they never learned. Wait, they were chasing Kyle? Has he lost weight? Like, is he faster now? 
You know, the last group I would run a run from in the history of like uh, socialism is Black Lives Matter. Right? Am I wrong? Like, seriously, go through the list of socialist groups and be like, if someone was going to chase me, who would I want to be? Probably Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Like, they're not going to catch you. You're not going to, you're not going to, they're not going to get you. What, Antifa? Those little frail white kids, they're not going to catch you. They'd be like me chasing you. You're going to get away. Like, the Communist Party of America, they've got, <laughs> they've got potatoes to distribute. They, they don't care. But Black Lives Matter, you're going to get caught. It might not be by the creators. They're fat women. Lesbians. The lesbians. Did you know that Black Lives Matter was created by lesbians? Jesse Lee Peterson talking about Black Lives Matter's founding is so fucking funny. It's the lesbians who created it. One guy's like, I don't care if they're lesbians. Like, why not? Anyway, someone's going to catch you. Like the one guy who hasn't figured out that this isn't a fun social club. He's like in shape or whatever. He's like, no, I can catch this guy. Of course you can. You're not getting away. You can get away from Antifa. You can get away from Mothers Against Drunk Driving. You can get away from the Klan. Like the Ku Klux. I don't know how they caught anybody, frankly. Very weird. You go La Raza. <laughs> Have you ever seen a Hispanic sprinter? La Raza's not going to get you. There's no chance. Anyway. <laughs> right. Was that from a chat? That was, yeah. It's the, how are they catching? Oh, that's how they catch Kyle. How did Kyle not get caught? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. How he didn't get caught. God, blessings upon him. I love that man. He's a man now. You can say it. Joseph Rosenbaum loved him as a boy, but I love Kyle Rittenhouse as a man. I should text that to Kyle. <laughs> uh, Mooley Porcher says, you moron. Trump's executive pardon power is limited to federal cases and all the January Sixers were dealt with by state-level prosecutors. Listen, tits. Can I call you tits? Uh, Mooley Poachers? Porchers? Mooley po Porchers? Oh, my. You do know Black Lives Matter. Um, all right. Here's the thing. They were prosecuted in federal courts in different states where they reside who could exercise jurisdiction over them. Uh, but January 6th occurred, all of the criminal acts occurred on federal property in Washington, D.C. at the state capitol building or at the, the federal capitol building, you can't charge them with a state crime in Washington, D.C. because Washington, D.C. isn't a state. It's a federal territory within the state of Maryland, part of Virginia. So, like, they're charged federally, dude, in the states where they reside because that's where they got arrested by the feds in that state. Like the federal department of Arizona would arrest a guy, but he'd get charged in federal court because January 6th didn't happen in Arizona. You can't violate Arizona law, state law in Washington, DC very easy. Like you could try and you could probably do it if you have look, I'm going to say it. Pedophiles have a way they can do it. They could violate somehow Arizona state uh, state law in Washington D.C., but most people have trouble doing that. So no, they were they were prosecuted in states, yes, but in federal courts and states and federal criminal court, federal criminal trial uh, charges. You cannot trespass the federal the the, the Capitol building in Washington D.C. under Wisconsin law. It's not possible. Wisconsin doesn't have any ability to determine a trespass over Washington, D.C. Capitol buildings. It's not. So, look, I'm, I called you tits and that made me happy. Thank you for making a thing I could talk about. It was fun for me. It would have been fun for you if I ranted longer, but I got mine. Evil Fandango says you wouldn't download State Live. <laughs> <gasps> okay, that was funny. Unreasonably funny to me, actually. You, know, you wouldn't download a car. I'm like, fuck, I wouldn't. Yes, I would immediately. 
Like if, if it's a cool car, I'd download it. If it wasn't a cool car, I might let it slide. But generally speaking, like I would download just about anything. Like that's awesome. Imagine if you could pirate like a Ferrari. Like you just go to your laptop and you're like, oh, I'm going to get on the school Wi-Fi and just click it and come back three days later. And all of a sudden you got a Ferrari then. That's, that'd be, who wouldn't do that? You wouldn't download a car. Maybe you wouldn't, <laughs> pussy. I would immediately. But okay, here we go. Here's the argument. Let's see what this guy comes up with. I really want to know how good. Oh, uh, Cupcake O Dooms. Oh, shit. I got to enlarge. Cupcake of Doom says, Nick, you should look into what the hails. What the hails? Vices, Medium Smart Megan Fox, and Tug are covering it. Look into what the hails. But it would be hilarious to see Rand on a full-blown tyrant judge. What the hails? Okay, if I type in what the hails, H-A-I-L-S, am I going to find this? What the hails? What the hell? What, there's a YouTuber called What the Hails, which is spelled differently. Is it the YouTube thing? Fuck me. I don't, I don't know what the Hails is. Valha, uh, what the hell? Okay, it's spelled wrong. That's why. What the Hails is YouTuber. Valhalla says, send me a link. I've been all over it. Well, I'm not going to dignify that. Sorry, Valhalla. Uh, okay, so here's his official acts immunity is acceptable within limits. Yeah, he, listen, court. I'm going to need you to put limits on that official acts immunity. But not for threatening to hang Mike Pence. Why? Why would you... Uh, why would he not be immune for threatening to hang Mike Pence? With my bare hands. So then he his paragraph starts... He gets two lines of this paragraph and then it just skips pages. But there's like seven lines of white here. But even Manson had due process rights. He's okay. So he starts his paragraph with but. Even Manson had due process rights and Trump is partially right about immunity from dot, dot, dot. Prosecution for official acts as president. Well, he's not right because it hasn't been decided. He might be right. He might be wrong. We, it has to literally be dictated from on high, which is just Clarence Thomas's toilet. But it's, uh, yeah. He says, uh, take, say, a president who, wait, oh, sorry. The normal run of presidential decisions may allow for post-presidency immunity. Well, what's the normal run of presidential decisions? This is where the shit breaks down when you think about it. What's a normal presidency? Pick a president. Right, like pick one. Uh, Eisenhower. Oh, sorry, you got a shitload of soldiers coming back from World War II. What do you do with them? Uh, build build highways. Let's just build some highways. And maybe a lot of houses that look the same. That would be cool. What else are they going to do? What else are they going to do? Well, there's a lot of women who didn't go to war and a bunch of these guys died. Maybe they'll just like find wives. <laughs> some of these guys are nerds, though. Just have them build roads. Have them build roads and houses. That's not a normal presidential decision. The interstate highway system from Eisenhower is not a normal presidential decision. We built all the roads. Dwight, what are we going to do next? I don't know. Blow a fucking hole in the mountain. Build a road through that. Have you tried that? Have you built a road through a mountain yet? We got dynamite. We got leftover C4, composition B. We got all this shit. These guys know how to use it. They were over there uh, blowing up these damn Germans. Like, why don't you blow up a mountain? Mountains can't be tougher than Germans. That's not normal. No other president's like, you know what? Let's blow a hole in the mountain. Well, the one, never mind. They like, they don't know. Bush, George Bush uh, Jr., right? I'm a cheerleader. He's like being a cheerleader. He's like laughing. He can't pronounce stuff. He's doing all these interviews. And then all of a sudden, some planes hit a building. That's not normal. Planes don't hit buildings. Presidents don't have to deal with that. He's like, who was it? Well, Saudi Arabia, but we're going to hit Iraq and Afghanistan. Why? <laughs> because... I don't do geography. I got to see in that. So like he goes and does, these aren't normal decisions. What's a normal decision? Barack Obama, million green cards to the, uh, to like dreamers or whatever. That's not a normal decision. Plus he had the guy in the Yemen. He's like, well, I got a drone strike that guy. He's like, well, that's an American citizen. 
Well, he's not like with his kids. No, he is. Well, we got to drone strike him anyway. Like he went on YouTube and said Muslim stuff. Like, aren't you Muslim? Quiet. Like he just, that's not normal. Presidents don't have normal, pre there isn't a normal presidency. That's the point of being president. You're there to address the non-normal. If you have a normal presidency, you should ask what the deep state is doing. What, what the fuck is happening behind the scenes? What are they hiding? Why is this normal? Why are gas prices a dollar thirty? I don't get it. No one, no one knows what a normal presidency looks like. You could pick any president and find something weird that they have to address. What is a normal presidential decision? Like just jerking off uh, Michelle Obama? Is that it? Like, because all of them have to do that now. Ever since two thousand eight, they're like, "Sorry, you have to service Michelle." And God, I hate doing this every. This is longer than. And Barack sitting there on his mom bike or whatever, like. The, what is normal presidential decision? JFK, very unnormal decision, right? Only one president had made that decision before, and that was Lincoln. They made the same choice. They were both wrong. What's a normal presidential decision? I don't know. What does that even mean? God, some lawyers are fucking stupid. Here we go. May allow for post-presidency immunity. <laughs> I talked about somebody with this and I don't even remember anymore. It might've been destiny. It might've been, I think it was destiny. It was also someone else. They talk about post-presidency immunity and, and all this stuff. It's like, well, they're no longer president. Uh, they could be indicted now. It's like your act in all criminal law and basically in all civil law that I can think of is cemented at the time you did the act. The law at the time is what applies to you. If they pass a subsequent law to address what you did prior, that's not, you 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 don't get to be prosecuted under that subsequent act, like a subsequent law. It doesn't work that way. You did the thing under this law, the law you're expected to follow, the law that's expected to protect you. That's what's supposed to happen. You don't get to then go, oh, no, no, actually, we, we wanted that to be illegal. We were just busy. We were just busy. Like, we were arguing about stuff. Pelosi was, like, pulling her shirt down. Like Schumer liked it, but all the other Democrats didn't. It was weird, man. She started crushing beer cans. Those things, they're big. Like how many times has she had those done? And then AOC's got her horse teeth out. She's just opening everybody's beard. <laughs> One beer after another. It was a wild party. It was house, the house was popping that night, but like, it was strange. We didn't know what to do. They don't get to make a law and go back in time like Marty McFly and like have it apply to you, something you did. They're like, oh, we wish we would have thought of that. That was a good idea. Yeah, we should make that illegal. Doesn't happen that way. So post-presidency immunity is a stupid thing to like talk about. You're either immune from prosecution or you're not. Now, if you want to quibble and like split hairs on this thing and be fair to this guy, which is stupid, don't be fair to lawyers. They're dumb and gay. If you want to be fair to this guy, maybe you go, okay, maybe he's not talking about prosecution immunity. Maybe he's talking about indictment immunity of a sitting president, which isn't actually real. But the DOJ has basically taken their thumbs and shoved them up their asses and said, you know what happens is while a president is in office, we will not indict them. We will be polite and wait until they're out of office to not like burden the presidency, the, the Department of Justice is under the executive branch, the president's their boss. We won't burden the presidency with an indictment because that will interfere with his official duties. And we don't want to do that because otherwise anybody could do that all the time. So he'll have indictment immunity until he's out of office. Maybe that's what this dumbass is talking about. I don't know. But the post presidency immunity. Yeah, if it's if you're immune from prosecution, you're just immune from prosecution. Like, so, wow, well, you were immune, but ooh, not anymore. Surprise. It's, it's not how immunity works. It can't. You thought you were immune to COVID, but you got the vaccine. Oh, sorry. Take, say, a president who must negotiate with a foreign country, cool, to let American hostages go. Not Brittany Griner, though. You know his name is Brandon, right? It's Brandon Griner. Like, does anybody think that's a Brittany? You guys ever met a Brit? Like, there's Brittany Murphy, there's Brittany Spears, that's Brittany Griner. Wow, sorry, we used we all we used all the hot on other Britneys. This one, 
This one looks like a tree that got chopped down in the forest of Zimbabwe. Uh, a vicious critic says, so a vicious critic of the president negotiating for hostage. Oh, wait, he says, and that country later attacks other Americans. So the president is negotiating with a foreign country to let American hostages go. That country attacks other Americans as one does. As one does. Right? Like, like oh, look, uh, when I was growing up in Scranton, we would resolve these Red Rover problems with negotiation. I think we should have you release the American hostages. He's like, we're going to kill some New Yorkers for this. Because they don't do geography either. And uh, so now they attack other Americans. So a vicious critic says, quote, the president should have just bombed the foreigners into oblivion. Cool. Wait, why is that a vicious critic? Why is that a vicious critic? That's awesome. Oblivion's a fun game. Like, do you know how advanced we would make Afghanistan if we bombed them into having an Xbox with Oblivion installed? That's, that's great. Instead of negotiating. Wrong, the art of the deal. I'm a great negotiator. I could get them Oblivion. I could get them Skyrim. You want to bomb them into Oblivion? I want to negotiate them into Skyrim, McDonald's, and Chick-fil-A where they can find Jesus. So the president's a traitor and must be prosecuted. That's the rest of the quote. But that president's actions may exemplify a president's acting within his or her broad discretion, thus not being prosecutable. Everybody understand, uh, misunderstands broad discretion. Right? They're like, oh, the president has broad discretion. There's only been one president, well, two. JFK and Trump are the only presidents who actually had broad discretion, right? Like all the other presidents had, you know, discretion over their acts. But JFK and Trump had broad, well, and Clinton. They had broad discretion. Clinton misused and abused his broad discretion. Look, I'll take one that's the size of two and call it a threesome. It's not the, Bill, no, it's not the same thing. You can't do, that's not how it works. It's like, that's how she works though. I kept her away from the buffet for two days. It's like, they all got broad discretion wrong. Like I'm saying, lawyers shouldn't be comedians. They're terribly unfunny. Or bad lawyers. I, you guys, probably both. Anyway, here we go. Uh, thus, not being prosecutable. So apparently, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, guys. I need your help. I'm, I'm like too into like telling jokes and riffing and like having fun because it's Friday. Like, oh, Ty bailed on me. Like, <sighs> Ty bailed on me like every mentor ever. Ty bailed on me at the last second. So I'm like, oh God, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell all the jokes through this thing and maybe I'll get through the stream. Let's revisit this as I'm thinking about it. They're like, is the president acting within his or her broad discretion and he's not prosecutable? Let's go through the president's actions in what he just laid out and find out what he's not prosecutable of. All right? So, scenario, I'm going to summarize this for. A president must negotiate with a foreign country to let American hostages go. So president is here, and well, we got these hostages, and I have money from the Federal Reserve and Jews, I can pay for the hostages, or like I can, I can tell them that the UN won't like uh, do whatever. Like we could do that. We can do this. We can figure this out. We got Dennis Rodman back, sir. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't actually captured by North Korea. He went trans and then went to North Korea and they let him go. Like it was weird. Wait, he went. That wasn't captured. Like no, that was, Dennis Rodman. Like went over there and he hung out. It's like, did he teach him how to block? I hope not. We have missiles. So the president has to negotiate with a foreign country to let American hostages go. Okay. Well, all right. We have tools. They have hostages. We can fix this. The country later attacks other Americans. Later. So presumably, the president negotiates. They let hostages go. And then that foreign country is like, you know what? Fuck America. Though. Like, that guy, that guy screwed us over. He's a really good negotiator. We fell for it, but he screwed us over. So they attack other Americans. A critic says they should be bombed into oblivion instead of negotiating. The president's a traitor and must be prosecuted. What's, wait, how is he a traitor? Because a critic said so? So that president's actions may exemplify a president acting within his or her broad discretion. That's not being prosecuted. Like, that's not a... A president negotiating with another head of state is not a crime. Like, it can't be... It literally cannot be a crime. 
He's the one guy who can talk to any head of state and it won't be treason under any circumstances. It can't be. He's the sole organ of foreign relations. The one person who can't commit treason in the United States is the president. A president could go to any enemy nation like Canada and talk to Trudeau. It's not treason. It can't be treason. You could give state, they could give state secrets away. Trump could sell dick, or well, Biden, I guess, could sell dick pics. They could do literally anything to anyone, any foreign head of state, no matter their status. Even if Congress has declared war against them, the president could go hang out, give them a hand job or whatever. Once Kamala Harris is president, well, she'd use her mouth. Anyway, if they could do that. It won't be treason because they get to determine how foreign relations work with exclusive plenary authority. No one gets the question. This is a lawyer, guys. I'm a jackass. I have a law license, but why? And like, this guy's a lawyer. Like, he should know this. You. Anyway. It's not being prosecutable because it's not prosecutable for him to negotiate with a foreign state to release American hostages. Even like hypothetically, even if a, an American president could somehow treason himself, he somehow could treason himself. Negotiating to release hostages is untreasonable. This is legitimately in the public interest of American citizens. Why would that ever be treason? You could probably negotiate with a foreign enemy of state to allow to get an American citizen back for being detained by a foreign state and, and like not be treason. You would probably be immune for prosecution. They'd be like, good job. Well, Biden tried, but he didn't have enough Adderall to get through the discussion. You figured it out. That's cool. All he wanted was ice cream because they live in a desert and they're dune smurfs and they don't have refrigerators. They've never seen ice cream before. Except in a Jewish home, which is why they don't like them. It's unleavened ice cream, though. It's not very good. It's not very good. There's no flour or grain in it. However, sorry, we got we to soldier on. However, as a reductio ad absurdum, if the president also gave the foreign land a train load trainload of nuclear weapons and said, hey, please blow up America with these. No, th this is going to actually scare people. He might well be prosecutable, maybe even while still in office. Actually, homie, uh, David. His last name? There's something weird. David. Oh, God, he's got cartoons in this. What is it? Fucking David Boyle. Jesus, I, I forgot already. He's very unimportant. Here we go. If a president were to give the foreign land, again, in the context of negotiating, you don't even have to do this, but in the context of negotiating for American hostages, gives them nukes and says, please blow up America with these. Guess what? He's the sole organ of foreign relations, literal plenary authority to do so. He's not, not prosecutable for this. That should make people uncomfortable in some weird way. And then you should get comfortable realizing that that's the, that's the point. That's the point of having plenary authority is that it is uncomfortable that someone wields total power that is unquestionable in a certain field. It is uncomfortable, but the reason we give it to that person is because they may have to use it uncomfortably for everybody else for a good purpose. The president, I've said this a million times, is the manifest political will of the country at the time of the election. He is, which means that if he decides that a foreign country should have nukes and blow up America, that's the manifest political. You should have seen it coming. You should have seen it coming, right? Like the girl gets in her eye. You should have seen it coming. And that's the manifest political will of the country. If they sufficiently hate America, to elect someone who would do this, who has the capacity to make this decision, they chose it. It's foreign relations. Congress can't question it. The court can't question it either. What you can do is impeach him. 25th Amendment him. Everybody, and everybody forgets. 
this one very basic thing. When you do a reductio ad absurdum argument, destiny, my friend, when you do this, you have to assume that everybody else is on board with the president. Like the president doesn't have nukes just like hanging around in bedroom. Like, well, I'll throw these in some grocery bags from Walmart. I'll just haul them to Kim Jong-un. I'll hand them to him and be like, here you go. Plastic bag I thought was sufficient. You got, I double bagged it. They're a little heavy, but please uh, throw these in America. It's not how it works. Like someone has to deliver these big ass fucking bombs that have all sorts of layers and layers of security around them. And they're like, well, what are we doing? Well, we're sending these nukes somewhere. Well, like, where are they going? And in North Korea. Well, that's weird. Who ordered that? The president. Oh, like, they're just going to go to North Korea? Like, we're just going to send them nukes? How many? Like, well, 40, 50. That doesn't sound right. Is the president okay? Like, are you sure it came? Like, it wasn't like a like a Nigerian prince email. Like, um, I just uh, became a Nigerian prince, and I have uh, these nuclear weapons, and I just need your bank account number so I could put, like... As you sure it wasn't a scam email that he's kind of old, like it uses Facebook. So maybe it was a scam. You're like, no, nah, the president said it. So we're just going to do it. You're going to load up 50 nukes on like a, like a radio flyer wagon and just haul them to North Korea on a boat or whatever. Like, yeah. Like, why not? Well, because it's fucking weird, man. Like we've never done anything like that. Like I've been here two years or whatever. Cause I did my reserve training. Like I've been deployed. Like it's been here two years. And we've never done that. And that's a long time. Like, yeah, it's fine. Like, we'll put him in the wagon. We'll put him on a boat and just drive him over there. Like, look, you pilot the boat. You don't drive it. Come on. Like, you've, what are you, what are you in the Navy? You fucking idiot. You pilot a boat. The Navy drives boats because those guys are dumb and gay. Like, they drive everything, including their uh, bunk mates. And you're just sitting here. You're in the army now, son. You got nukes. Did, you have to assume that everybody involves, like, no one's like, you know what? Like, I know it's an order from the president, but, like, the guy who's got to FedEx the nuke to Kim Jong-un has got to be like, I don't know if I want to drive the truck up the driveway. This doesn't seem right. Destiny asked me that. He's like, well, what if, what if Trump ordered the assassination from SEAL Team 6 at Biden? I'm like, does SEAL Team 6 shoot Biden? Well, yeah, it's like, well, then they probably, he probably deserved it, right? Like, he's like, well, it's a president ordering the assassination of his political enemy. Oh, you, you think like SEAL Team 6 is just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to shoot that guy who's running for president against my commander in chief because he asked. Like, they're not going to go like, wait a minute, though. Like, this is strange. We don't tend to shoot major party candidates that are opposed to the current commander in chief. Like, that's new. We might want to ask someone if that was like, like maybe they got the cipher wrong. Like maybe they opened up the Applejack's box and they got the little decoder ring and they did it wrong or it was printed wrong or whatever. It wasn't like assassinate Biden. It was like assimilate Biden. That's not right either. But you, you like, you understand how weird it is when they make these arguments like, well, yeah, he's going to just give nuclear weapons to an enemy of the state and say, blow up America. Somebody's going to be like, eh, you know what? Can we put a pause on this? Remember, guys, if you don't think this is going to happen, President Trump's commander, uh, his, uh, his military staff, his cabinet, lied to him about troop deployments because they didn't trust him. Remember that. They lied about where the soldiers were to Trump because they didn't trust him, allegedly. And we're thinking, like, if he just decided to give nukes to Kim Jong-un, like, they're going to be like, you know what, that's okay. Let, don't tell them where the troops are, but give them the nukes. Yeah, it's not going to fucking happen. These are dumb arguments. I fucking hate this. Okay, anyway, he might well be prosecutable, maybe even while still in office. No? For, he'd be impeached, I'm guessing. For acting ultra furious and treasonably. Ultra furious means at, like, outside of the law. Hold on, let me get the exact definition. It's it's literally, it's uh, acting or done beyond one's legal power or authority. He wouldn't be acting ultra furious. He'd be acting furious. He'd be acting literally within the law. I hate this. I hate, I hate these people. On that note, while the court's upcoming ugh, opinion can confirm that immunity exists for reasonable official acts, it could also confirm that for utterly non-reasonable acts, utterly non-reasonable isn't a thing. That's a made-up term. It's a made-up term. 
Uh, E.G. asking foreigners to murder innocent Americans. <laughs> hey guys, I don't want to. I don't want to blackmail you, but they do this. They actually do that. That's not even weird. Uh, or acts taken as part of running for office, such as January 6, 2021 related acts. It's not running for office in January 6. The other guy's already elected. Threatening to EG threatening to hang Mike Pence to get Trump reelected. Did Trump threaten to hang Mike Pence? I don't remember that. Did, I don't remember Trump going, Mike, you know, I liked him. He was a good vice president. He hung around. He, he even supported me down in Georgia, but then the other day he didn't support me. So I would like a noose, a Mike Pence sized noose. No one has the measurements. Maybe he has the fly that was sitting on his head. Where, where did he? Not for performing the duties of office. Immunity will not, will not exist. Okay, so great. Uh, a, a completely bullshit argument based on nothing. I'm not going to give anybody Valhalla Waits eye candy. It doesn't exist. Trump may legally be able to pardon himself if reelected. Thus, the court's opinion and Trump's trial should not be unfairly delayed. So we're at the second argument now. Notice how he concluded that last one. Wasn't a, this wasn't a good conclusion. This is just bad legal. Not only is it stupid argument, but it's bad legal writing in general because it doesn't actually conclude. So here we go. We have another another one of these instances where there's a there's a line here. Maybe this is the formatting and it's just how it comes out because I'm zoomed in. That's probably it. As for another type of immunity, colon, he has immunity in quotes. This is maybe right because it's not really immunity. Folk, it's folks, it's folks. There's an S. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Where did it go? Folk have made weak arguments that a president can't pardon himself. Oh, that that's the only right statement so far. It is a weak argument. For example, that one cannot grant oneself something or be a judge in one's own case or commit self-dealing. Well, you can't be a judge in your own case. That is exactly true. Like, oh, I guess maybe you mean practically not, like philosophically shouldn't be able to. That's weird. A real Patriot Party says, Nick, I have an idea for you. Invite Lofty on to talk about cosplay while Valhalla choose, choose goat wool, having to watch it. Make it a fun Friday for chat. Not today. Today is not that day. But one can grant oneself one thing. Forgiveness, for example. Oh, that's nice. You can forgive yourself. You can forgive yourself. That's nice. Thank you. And pardoning someone isn't the same as being a judge in a case. Nope, it's way different, actually. Very different. One is a pardon, and one is a judge. A judge who applies a lot of facts after a fact finder has determined what the facts are. Uh, traditionally, monarchs had the power of pardon. Yes, because the president is a monarch that is elected for a period of time and sufficiently limited by the judicial branch and the legislative branch based on constitutional uh, definitions. Okay, anyway. And people in government can even increase their own salaries. That's self-dealing. Kinda. They can, but not until they get re-elected after the increase. Despite Congress people having to wait years before it takes effect. Cool. Those arguments against self-pardon power are quite questionable. The, people go to this. Well, Congress can raise their own salary. Motherfuckers. Congress can insider trade when they're about to legislate a specific company or industry. Congress can know they're going to regulate an industry. And the day before the bill drops, they can invest in that company. The bill drops and they make millions of dollars. And it's legal. Fuck Congress. They used to go to Epstein for that, but now someone has to do it. Therefore, it may be a fool's hope to think Trump cannot pardon himself for crimes if reelected. This makes it imperative that while the court shouldn't rush Trump's trial if one occurs, to an extent that denies him his rights, it also shouldn't delay Trump's trial for one day beyond when it should occur. That's a great tautology, David Boyle. Trump's trial shouldn't happen after it should occur, not, not in the slightest amount. It should happen when it should happen. Thank you. Does someone hire this guy like ever? This guy, what does he do? Is he like really good at something like Yahtzee or whatever, but not at 
anything else. I can't think this guy's fucking like he's dumb. That's coming from me. Even if some think Trump is citizen shame. So he's got this in a parenthetical. It's an entire parenthetical paragraph. Holy Christ. And then he's got all these names and quotes. Even if some think Trump is citizen shame. January 6 Osama. That's kind of funny. Pussy grabbing Palpatine. I like that one. I got a lightsaber for you next. Uh, it's some lightning fingers. Or the white OJ Simpson. Now that's just racist. Wait, like, if he's the white O.J. Simpson, he has to marry, or he has to murder a black chick named, uh, right? Like, named, like, Shaniqua White, or whatever. Trump, like Charles Manson, reasonable, still has the right to a fair trial. Yeah, of course, just like Charles Manson. But the public also has rights. They don't ever get the right to a fair trial, ever. Amicus wants everyone's rights, duties, duly respected and balanced. So files this brief for neither party. Wait a minute. Guys. Okay, so uh, rights do come into conflict, right? Like that is, that is the thing that occurs. Rights occasionally come into conflict. The fair trial right doesn't come into conflict with a public right. Like that's not a thing that occurs. There's no right that the public has like, well, they get a fair trial, but have we considered this other right that exists? Now, there may be practicality issues. Like, like to get a fair trial, we'd have to wait 45 years for all these people to die. Well, they're not going to do that, but that's not because of a public right. That's because there's literally just a limit to how fair it can be. Fairness, fairness legally is actually interesting. Good point, Nick. Thank you for thinking of it. People go, well, fairness, fair trial means a fair trial. Like it's fair. It's bereft of any biases or undue influence. No, no. Fairness is fair up to the point that it can be. Where it doesn't unreasonably. Um, trying to think of the right word here. Prejudice. A defendant. Once you get to non-prejudicial uh Activity, the defendant has no unfair trial because fairness is non-prejudicial leg legally. It doesn't mean that it's actually fair, though. Right? Fairness is fairness, but fairness isn't real. I tell my kids this. When they're, when they're young, the second they cry, it's not fair, right? And that's when I, like, deny them food when they're just born. They say, it's not fair, Dad. My two-year-old walked in. They're like, you know what? It's unfair that President Biden manipulated social media and actually uh, utilized a foreign company owned by a former Nazi in uh, Argentina called Dominion to uh, uh, manipulate voting data and use their voting algorithms to eliminate Trump votes and actually give them to um, Jeb Bush to make him feel better while letting Biden win. It was unfair of that. And I was like, that's right, my two-year-old child who said that very articulate sen sentence. But you know what? Fairness isn't real. No, but when my kids like start complaining about fairness, I like, say, guys, it's fair. You don't say the, the world isn't fair. No, shut the fuck up. Fair isn't a real thing. You don't get fa like fair isn't real. It's not that the world isn't fair. It's that fairness isn't a thing that exists. You can't be fair. There's no way to consider every possible interest and balance them all equally. It doesn't happen. It's like, oh. Well, we want a fair trial. Oh, we want to eliminate everything and make everything perfect. You can't. You can't do that. Judges exist, and they're very imperfect. Most of them are dumb. But it's not about public rights. And because once everyone's rights respected, yeah. I'm a woman respecter, too. Uh, this all means that unless absolutely necessary to delay the opinion, much less delay it until the end of the term, the opinion should be released as soon as reasonably possible. It's always good when you tell the uh, Supreme Court when they should release their opinion. Say in early May. Oh, that's even better. It's kind of specific. Look, if you guys could do this around early May, that'd be good. If you can't, you're fucked up. Voters have a right to know if Trump is a criminal before voting. No, they don't. Actually, they don't have a right to know if Trump is a criminal. No, I mean, I guess they would find out if Trump was a criminal, but the thing is, Trump isn't a criminal until conviction. So he's not, and the exhaustion of appeals, I guess, but he no. not he would have to be found guilty for the appeal. Never mind. He hasn't been found guilty yet of any criminal act. The immunity thing is an open question, but it's interlocutory. Indeed, this case shouldn't be a Trojan horse. No, that would be weird. 
letting Trump delay the trial until after the election. That's not what Trojan horses are. Has anybody told this guy the story of the Trojan horse? Like Trump delaying a trial until after the election. There's not a gate. There's not a bunch of Greeks inside of a wooden horse. Like, guys, have you ever thought about how weird that is? Like, look, I'm weird. So I go outside like three in the morning sometimes. Now, let's say you're like, well, I'm going to go outside and pee at three in the morning because naked pees outside at three in the morning are perfect. So you go out and you're like, yeah, you open your garage and there's a giant wooden horse there. And you're like, well, you know what? There was an occupying army out here yesterday. And now they're gone, but there's a giant wooden horse. You know what I'm going to do? I was going to go pee naked outside at three in the morning, but instead I'm going to grab this giant horse, definitely big enough for a team of Greeks. And I'm going to bring it into the house. Who does this? Why would they do? They're like, oh, it's a gift. It's a horse. That's why we should bring it to the gates. And Hector's like, I'm dead, so I can't tell them this is stupid. Paris is like, I just want to fuck Helen, even though she's fat. And they're all like, yeah, bring it in. No, this was dumb. So, quote, justice delayed is justice denied. Sorry, I keep, I'll, I'll keep going. It just, I have problems with the Trojan horse story. It doesn't make any sense. That's a gift. Why would that be a gift? That's a bunch of their ships dismantled and made into a giant horse that is hollow. It probably has people in it. There's how long have they been in that horse? There's probably shit and piss leaking out of it. Literally. They, they just all didn't go to the bathroom for hours while Troy's like, that's a horse. It's cool. We'll bring it inside. This is weird. Justice delayed is justice denied. Attributed to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We won't. Now, we're not in February. I can't make that joke. Now for chaos avoidance issues, dot, dot. He ellipses into section three. Who ellipses into a section of corporate? I actually like this guy now. Avoiding the court of chaos or Anderson offers more reason to avoid delaying the court's opinion or offering excessive immunity. It's like, wow, I already covered this twice. Now I'm going to cover it again. Good job. Uh, Celestial Interface says, P outdoor game. Dude. Women will never understand because they like have to try too hard. Guys go outside and they're like, I don't have to aim at anything. You're just like, ah, and the breeze hits your ball. You're like, yes. Yes. And if you, like it makes a, a song like wind chimes through your stumble or whatever. Like it's perfect. Peeing outside is great. Like God shit on men a lot in some ways. He's like, well, you get to go to war and have like high suicide rates and you have to deal with women, but you can pee outside. The guys are like, deal. Deal. Uh, so here we go. Science fiction author. This is perfect. Roger Zelazny. That guy. Oh, that guy's the guy who's uh, in charge of Ukraine. Wrote the novel, The Courts of Chaos in 1978, including... A character named Dworkin. Oh, I've heard of Dworkin. I, I didn't know who wrote this or what it was from, but I've heard of Dworkin. Uh, though not legal theorist Ronald Dworkin. Well, no, that guy was like real, but this guy was a fictional character named Dworkin in a sci-fi novel from 96. I didn't think the court was like, oh, that guy. No. Well, oh, no, wait. Yeah, it's not the same person. With a 1985 follow-up called Trumps of Doom. Get it? You couldn't make it. He says you couldn't make it up. Like, if he hadn't said it, I would have said it for him, but he said it for me. He dead. On that note, and commenting on Trump versus Anderson, Amicus isn't fully endorsing the Anderson opinion. Guys. The Supreme... Do you know the balls on this guy? Do you know how much outdoor peeing this guy had to do to have balls this sturdy? Here's what he just said. On that note, commenting on Trump v. Anderson, which is a Supreme Court case that they just decided this year. This court decided Trump v. Anderson this year. And he says, look, I'm not fully endorsing the Anderson opinion. Holy shit. Look, I know you guys just said this. I'm not going to fully endorse that shit, though. This guy is becoming my favorite lawyer. Like I was shitting on him at the, at the beginning. But he's like an Italian in Formula One racing. Like, he's going to come back and win at the end. You know the Italian's going to do it. I love this guy now. States have always caused chaos in elections. It's called the Electoral College. You can see him doing the black lady snap with the head movement. Like, But it is what is. Oh, he left out the second hit. It's supposed to be it is what it is. But he says it is what is. 
that's that's a white man taking right there. He took that from black people. Congress can now pass laws allowing prosecution of insurrectionist federal office candidates. Yeah, they can. They already maybe after the president election cycle, so as not seeming to target Trump unfairly. <laughs> they would have to. That'd be pretty important. Anyway, he says anyway. Nothing in the Constitution requires that we endure such chaos. Anderson, quoting Anderson, uh, if the court wants to see real chaos, though, it should either give Trump immunity for his alleged election fraud violence or overly delay its opinion or both. But the Constitution doesn't require those evils. Why would that be real chaos? Trump might win an election. Based on history, though, Joe Biden will steal it. January 6th may look like a picnic compared to what may happen if the court does either slash both of these things. Trump's of doom indeed. Riffing off Ronald Dworkin, one shall say. Like, who isn't riffing off Ronald Dworkin on occasion? Taking both Trump's and the public's rights seriously is important. I mean, it's important to take them both seriously. As for the public's rights, the following cartoon illustrates the danger to the court's credibility if the court seems to delay unduly its opinion and thus Trump's trial. Now, here you have one of these cool, smart political cartoons from, like, The New Yorker by Shinneman, the star... Quote, we're scheduling arguments to decide if you're subject to laws of man. What's a good time for you? That's not, that's, that's notable Trump sympathizer, John Roberts, chief justice of the Supreme Court, asking Trump when he can pencil in arguments. Fuck sake. No. Okay. True uh, Shenman Tribune content agency available at Richard Gallant. Anyway, here we go. Uh, the cartoon above is a sort of ghost of Christmas future hat tip to Charles Dickens. Thank you, Charles Dickens for telling us that that, that that cartoon above is a warning of what could happen if the court forgets the people have rights against Trump too. Yeah. Again. Uh, yes. John Roberts is a notorious Trump supporter who has, especially since the end of the election, uh, been overly deferential to Trump. Indeed, the court shouldn't want the public to see it as the courts of chaos and evil as Roger Zelazny might say. No one sees it though. The current film, Dune Part 2. Everybody pour out one for my man, Ty, who is going to rant about Dune 2 today. Is Dune pilled like a Dune Smurf in Israel? He, he, he was not a fan. He's not a fan. Features would be Messiah. Paul Atreides, 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 who, spoiler alert, stop listening if you care about Dune 2 finds he's the grandson of bloated, sadistic tyrant Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Oh, I didn't know that. Sounds like Vladimir Putin. No, actually, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen does not sound like Vladimir Putin at all. I'm glad you put a question mark and not a period because you would have been menstruating at the end of that sentence. Instead, you're asking a question. We can just say, no, it doesn't. Vladimir Harkonnen is way different. Then he prepares to outdo him, launching an insane holy war which will kill billions of people. Look, I'm not a fan of Holy Wars, but I am. I'm a fan of Holy Wars and the uh, underage child prince. Holy War, which will kill billions of people. Those are rookie numbers. Trump has dark pseudo-messianic similarities. Trump is the first president in my entire life to not start a foreign engagement. The first one, the literal first one to not start a foreign engagement. Like, well, he's going to do it, though. He's really. Remember when they made fun of him for saying two Corinthians? This is two Corinthians. I liked one Corinthians, but two Corinthians is better. Sometimes they rub you in different ways. Like, he's like that. They're like the second Corinthians. Like, he does he not know there's two books. Like, that's not a two. They're like, but he's probably going to do a holy war as a messiah. The Christ. Holy shit. Indeed. Trump supporters have portrayed him as a gigantic partworm god emperor of Dune from Frank Herbert's, uh, Herbert's eponymous 1981 novel. Have they? <laughs> Trump supporters made this? This is funny. What is this? This is a Trump penis. Like it goes inside and then it licks you from the inside. What the fuck is that? And the monstrous Manson-esque picture there. That's not a Manson-esque picture. That's a very phallic picture. Trump as a penis, it's black too, so it's big. And it's like, but it's gold on top, you know, a little orange. And these little guys down here, like, just rub him quick. Like maybe he'll maybe he'll finish and go. What is this? What is this picture? This is from a Trump supporter. I like it. I would buy this. I would hang this in my bathroom. 
What is this from? See, also, unless you God made Trump video presenting ex-president as a messiah figure causes controversy among Iowa pastors. <gasps> Where are these things? We, we This might be a show coming up because these things sound great. Uh, so here we go. When when Trump portrays himself as messianic and godlike, and so do his followers, not pretty good deity. Dune part two <laughs> reminds us how chaotically evil and unhinged such messianic leaders can be. I'm I'm literally blown away by the giant Trump like snake phallus. Trump, however, may legally be able to act unhinged as he wants. <laughs> Everybody can act as unhinged as they want. They can't commit a crime. That's way different. Unhinged is not a crime. What? Who is this man? Who is this man? Have you guys ever seen Dracula 2000? You know when Dracula walks in, he's like, he's like, he's like the precursor to emo. He's got like the curly flowing hair. And he like looks like thinner than I am. And he's eaten less iron in his life. It's like very, he's, he makes me look black. And he's like walking around. When he walks by, all the women go, <gasps> like all of them. Where was I going with this? I, I literally don't. I lost my train of thought thinking about how pretty that man was. All right. I wish I had a good reason for losing. I'm just like, I wish I had some excuse for like, well, I have Alzheimer's or whatever. I have AIDS. No, no, I like. That guy was pretty as fuck. Where was that? Anyway. <laughs> I wish I remembered why I got on that subject. I had a reason. I really did. Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, like a dune god emperor and using his self-pardon power, that monar uh, monarchical power, if he becomes president again, may legally, legally be active. What would remind me of Dracula 2000 at that point? Specifically, was how Dracula had power over people. Circle back, but I can't. I can't remember what I said. Fuck. And I love. I love this brief. Wait, uh, JJ says you have to watch the biggest problem in the universe. Vito's booty bit from tonight. It's the funniest thing that's ever happened on the show. I will, but not tonight. I'm actually over time that I was going to uh, finish the show. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this brief and we'll be done. Um, that was kind of the plan. Well, twelve to twelve thirty was the plan. So we're 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 twelve twelve. We're like halfway there, like Bon Jovi. Uh, all right, here we go. However, this court isn't obl uh, obliged to make sure Eugene Carroll's rapist defamer is pressed again. <laughs> the court may be effectively more obliged so he goes to trial quickly. Nope, they're not actually because. I don't know if you guys know this, but even if Trump were a rapist to famer, he still gets to go to trial either as a speedy trial as his right, or he can waive his right. Like they don't get to go, actually, this guy's a rapist to famer. We'll we'll go to trial more quickly. Certainly not the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court does not get to set a district court calendar for Trump because he's a rapist to famer. Insane. Startup Lab says, Nick, chill. We don't want you to be an interweb weirdo too. Hope you get your groove back. I guys. This is one of the funniest legal filings I've seen in a while. I'm excited. People used to ask me, they're like, why don't you read more funny uh, lawsuits? Because most lawyers aren't funny. Because they're professional and they're trying to do something right. This document? This thing is... Guys, this is before the Supreme Court. This is an amicus brief that's docu uh, documented before the Supreme Court. A clerk... Not a justice... A clerk will read this amicus brief and they'll tell the other clerks how fucking funny it is. And they'll tell their bosses like snippets or whatever, like the best bits. Like, look at this. Someone. Guys, do you know the story of Clarence Thomas um, and his appointment to the Supreme Court? He got accused by the one chick of like Anita Hill or whatever, I think, of like making a joke about putting pubic hair on a Pepsi can, right? Whatever, something weird like that, some sexual harassment thing. Some clerk is going to read this document and see the picture of Trump as a questionably African phallus. And they're going to go, you know what? 
Clarence wants to see this picture. And Clarence Thomas is going to look on a like at a badly printed out picture of Trump as a giant black phallus. That's actually funny to me. Like that is unreasonably funny to me that that will happen. Where do you find this? Like how often does this occur? It doesn't. So here we go. Finally, Amicus thanks the court respectfully for having relatively expedited the present proceedings. Amicus regrets that President Joe Biden was disrespectful to the court in his recent State of the Union address. Yeah, but I regret that too. I'm, I'm really sorry that someone else did something I have no control over. I mean, he's a president. He should have listened to me. But Trump hasn't always respected the court either. The court, they're, most of them are stupid. People should respect the court and vice versa. Now, we need to just clarify this point for all things. No one should respect anything or anyone. Respect what merits respect. That's it. Like, wow, you should respect this guy. But what if he's crazy? What if they're all stupid? What if they're all Sonia Sotomayor? Would you respect him? That's like a group of toddlers running around trying to define law. Terrible. Anyway, conclusion. The court should neutrally. With patriotism and justice, the court should not with patriotism, by the way. Only constitutional uh, constitutionality. That's the only question. Patriotism and justice. Decide on fair parameters for presidents and ex-presidents' criminal immunity. No, constitutionality. That's it. And do so without unfair haste or needless delay. Amicus humbly thanks the court for its time and consideration. Thank you, David Boyle from Long Beach, California, you fucking moron. Look, the court's only concern should be constitutionality. You can look to how the court determined this in the past. Civil immunity exists on a balance of powers question. The judiciary does not have the power over the court or over the executive in civil suits because it's not in the constitution, except in very limited nature for when the executive is exceeding his own authority on a balance of powers question. That's actually a lie by the court, but it's the best reasoning that they have because that's not in the constitution either. That was decided by Marbury versus Madison. And when the court acted extra judicial, extra constitutionally or ultra vires in granting themselves the power to determine constitutionality for all of the future to come and giving them an effective veto over both Congress and the court and giving them ultimate authority over any branch of government if they determine to take it. That was the most unconstitutional decision that exists. And what they were doing is specifically saying these other branches can't act outside the constitutional granted authority. And Marbury versus Madison is not a delegated authority within the constitution. And with that, guys, that's the end of the show. Oh, wait, Neff Sam says Abraham Lincoln, vampire slayer. Exactly. That's the end of the show. Look, I said I was going to go to 12 to 1230 tonight. It's 1217, 1218 now. That's it. Ty Beard is my friend, but he's a motherfucker for canceling on me last minute, even though I love him. And I'll jiggle his beard when I see him next. But I'm still mad at him. Thanks for bearing with me through a show that's completely improv and had no plan because I was planning to talk to a Texan lawyer about silly stuff. And he left. He left me. He left me like a Chicago dad. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. Stray bullets are hitting my siblings. Because I'm on the south side. I'm not in the good business. Side and I'm not in the white suburb. I'm in the south side. In Aurora. I don't know where Aurora is actually just from Wayne's world. Anyways, thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. It's a Friday show. Very laid back. It was supposed to be laid back with two lawyers. Instead, you got no lawyers. Have a nice night. We'll see you Monday. I think. Peace. Peace. Question mark. Oh, he drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planing tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this bummer Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erlang the white shores of Maine to the hills of Glenlivet. There's no one who plays the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed. Make the law what we have now. Oh, he 
is the lady is fair, and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag, bow more of that bright spirits flow as the ones who get on your blood. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter, as we hear lost blaming tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Limit, there's no one who explains the wrong better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all planet folks from Dead Tea to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Pour out a glass for the ones who have passed To make the love what we have now 